Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer on Monday the 8th of June. Thank you for joining me this morning. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender, the Senior Pastor at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. I trust you've had a good weekend. Uh, we've been celebrating this last weekend ourselves as a family. Uh, the 21st birthday of our eldest child, our daughter Charlotte, which has been lovely to be able to do. And we've got much to thank God for in our lives. And I'm sure that as you come this morning to prayer, there'll be things too for which you can thank God. So let's bow our heads, shall we? And at the beginning of this day, remember the presence of the Lord with us now. Psalm 74. O oh God, why do you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you acquired long ago, which you redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you came to dwell. Direct your steps to the perpetual ruins. The enemy has destroyed everything in the sanctuary. Your foes have roared within your holy place. They set up their emblems there. At the upper entrance they hacked the wooden trellis with axes, and then, with hatchets and hammers, they smashed all its carved work. They set your sanctuary on fire. They desecrated the dwelling place of your name, bringing it to the ground. <clears throat> they said to themselves, We will utterly subdue them. They burned all the meeting places of God in the land. We do not see our emblems. There is no longer any prophet, and there is no one among us who knows how long. How long, O oh God, is the foe to scoff? Is the enemy to revile your name for ever? Why do you hold back your hand? Why do you keep your hand in your bosom? Yet God, my King, is from of old, working salvation in the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the dragons in the waters. You crushed the head of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. You cut openings for springs and torrents. You dried up ever-flowing streams. Yours is the day. Yours also is the night. You established the luminaries and the sun. You have fixed all the bands of the earth. You made summer and winter. Remember this, O Lord, how the enemy scoffs, and an impious people reviles your name. Do not deliver the soul of your dove to the wild animals. Do not forget the life of your poor for ever. Have regard for your covenant, for the dark places of the land are full of the haunts of violence. Do not let the downtrodden be put to shame. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Rise up, O God, plead your cause. Remember how the impious scoff at you all day long. Do not forget the clamour of all your foes the uproar of your adversaries that goes up continually. Thanks be to God for his word. Now let us pray. <clears throat> this is the place and this the time. Here and now God waits to break into our experience. God waits to change our minds, to change our lives, to change our ways. God waits to make us see the world and the whole of life in a new light. God waits to fill us with hope, joy and certainty for the future. This is the place as are all places. This is the time as are all times here and now let us praise God glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen a prayer of confession O Lord our God 
in distress we call to you, from the depths we cry for help. The storm swirls around us, our troubles threaten to engulf us. We feel we have been banished from your sight, but we look again towards your loving peace. We have clung to worthless things and forfeited the grace that could have been ours. We are trapped under a weight of sin and our life in you is ebbing away. O oh Lord, we call to you. Forgive us and restore us through Jesus our Redeemer. May Almighty God forgive you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, give you time for amendment of life and bring you the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so we begin a new series of readings now in our morning prayer. This week we shall be uh, reading through the letters to the churches that are contained in chapters 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation. Many years ago I read a book written by John Stott called What Jesus Thinks of the Church and it's a short series of sermons that uh, were preached on this theme. I don't intend to preach those sermons but I do intend to point you to these ever relevant comments that God made on the state of the early church which might indeed be relevant for us today. So today we read from chapter 2 and we read the first seven verses. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduringly patiently, enduring patiently, and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love that you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit, you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. Thanks be to God for his word. So, some things that we're going to hear as we go through these letters that are written. Firstly, the angel of the church. A lot of discussion on what this could mean. But basically, it could refer to the character of the church. You know, organisations and movements have a character. They have a natural inclination to do so, which formed by repeated behaviours. Think about families. Families tend to operate in very similar ways, don't they? And churches do as well. Over a period of time, there's a character that's built up, there's an attitude, there's a way of doing things. So, to the angel of the church in Ephesus write. In other words, these words are going straight to the heart of the church. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. Seven golden lampstands, one lampstand for each church, each of the seven churches to whom is receiving a letter. The lampstand, the presence of God. <clears throat> when you light a lamp, it's visible. And so here uh, we have this sense of the lampstand being the light that shines out. What fuels the lampstand? Because uh, this would have been a, an oil lamp. It's fueled by the presence of God, the spirit of God. And indeed, God threatens to remove his living presence 
from them unless they put their house in order. The other thing is it comes from one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. This is the presence of God active. You know what, even in this situation, because at this time uh, there was much upheaval in Ephesus as throughout the Roman world. God is still at work and God is still active. And for all the enduring, for all uh, the problems that they were facing, the cure for them is to remember what they'd learned at first. I want to ask you this morning, what is it that brought you to know the Lord first of all? To have an, an awareness, a daily awareness that he was with you in every situation. Some of you may have been brought up in church and that's fine. But some of us came to faith later. But for all of us, there would have been a decisive moment at which we suddenly realised that what we were professing was actually true and true for us. What was it? For the Ephesians, here John writing the letter, as it were, the words of God, is being told, is telling the Ephesians, look, you had a great love for God. Go back to what it was that was your main characteristic. Don't just drift. Don't let your love grow cold. And if you manage to do that, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that's in the paradise of God. What does that remind you of? It reminds me of Eden, where, of course, there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from which people were not to eat because that knowledge was too great for them. But here in the paradise of God, there's the promise that actually that knowledge, that awareness of God fully will be their inheritance if they keep going. And so for us, there's the promise ahead of us if we persevere, that we too will be with God in paradise forever. May God help us to remember and to work out and to hope for all that God promises us. Let us pray together. <clears throat> so we pray for the church's renewal today. Spirit of promise, spirit of unity, we thank you that you're also the spirit of renewal. Renewing the whole church, we pray, that passionate desire for the coming of God's kingdom, which will unite all Christians in one mission to the world. May we all grow up together into him who is our head, the saviour of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Father, you grant your people gifts that we may work together in the service of your Son. Bless those who lead, that they may be strong and true, yet be humble before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who teach, that they may enlighten our understanding, yet be taught by your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who offer healing, that they may extend your touch of grace, yet always know themselves your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those through whom you speak, that they may proclaim your word in power, yet have their ears open to your gentle whisper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who administer, help and organise, that they may be diligent in their duty, yet seek your kingdom first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for those we know and love and for ourselves in a moment of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever language or form is common to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. So may God, from the wealth of his glory, give you power through his spirit to be inwardly strong. May Christ make his home in your hearts through faith. That you may come to know how broad, long, high and deep is his love and be filled with the very nature of God himself. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you and with those whom you love, and with God's people everywhere this day and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for prayer this morning. I trust you have a good day, whatever you're doing. And uh, may you know the Lord's presence with you in all your daily activities. Look forward to joining with you uh, this evening when we begin another new series of readings. I shall wait to let you know about that tonight at 9pm. But until then, God bless you today. Keep safe. Keep praying for one another. Please keep praying for me too. And until we meet again tonight at 9pm, God bless you. And goodbye.